Hello and welcome to the Worldly Black Channel. Today I'm going to show you a neat way to balance the Panasonic 35 to 100 mm zoom lens on a Zenmuse X5 camera. There's loads of different lenses out there for the Zenmuse X5 series of cameras. The list of supported lenses on the DJI website is pretty comprehensive now. But there's one lens that's on the list that's incredibly useful but isn't so popular because it's a major problem to balance. The Panasonic Lumix G Vario 35 to 100mm lens is a manual zoom lens that's a bit on the heavy side at 135 grams. But if you're doing aerial surveys or inspections, particularly with photographs, it allows you to get great close up images and not have to fly too close to whatever it is that you're inspecting. And if you get this lens well balanced and your aircraft has low vibrations, it makes a pretty decent job of video and is excellent for images. Later on, I'll show you a few shots and some applications of the lens you may not have considered. So let's take a closer look at how we can get this lens balanced. So why do you need a balanced gimbal and lens? After all, the motors on the gimbal are there to keep the camera pointing where it should be and they're rated so that they can handle the combined weight of the camera and lens. That's obviously true, but if the camera and lens are balanced, they aren't having to work as hard, and the gimbal controller isn't having to compensate as much to keep everything pointed in the right direction. And this is particularly important when you're using a longer lens, because any small movements due to the craft vibrations or gimbal wobbles, are, they just get amplified in the picture. So here we've got the X5 camera that I use on my Inspire and S900 and it's fitted with the standard 15mm lens. As you can see it's not perfectly balanced even with an ND filter screwed on the front but actually because it's only a 15mm lens you're unlikely to see any issues in the video. This is the Olympus 14-42 zoom lens. It's a very light pancake zoom lens that you can operate remotely from your controller so it's incredibly useful. It's also relatively cheap and although you can control the zoom remotely it's not really fast enough for tracking zoom shots but it's a great all-rounder and it's actually my go-to lens. There's loads of reviews on this so check them out for full details. Because it's very light the weight is balanced towards the back and it needs a balance ring which you can get from the DJI website. It will work without one but if you're flying fast or it's windy or both the gimbal can sort of get knocked out of lock and just dangle there sadly until it's reset. Even with the balancing ring and this filter we've got fitted it's still a bit out of balance. So this is the Panasonic Lumix 35 to 100mm manual zoom lens and these are incredibly cheap for what they are even though it's at the upper end of the weight range of the X5 compatible lenses it's surprisingly light at only 135 grams and if you settle for a silver lens rather than the black one it'll be even cheaper. But as you can see, at maximum zoom, it's very front heavy. And it needs balancing somehow. The X5 gimbal really struggles, and to be honest, I don't want to overload it and damage it, so I won't show you. So, how are we going to balance this? Well, there's a few YouTube videos out there that show a weight made from lead melted in the bottom of an old Coke can and then stuck to the back of the camera with some Velcro or foam tape. And I tried this and I wasn't really happy with the result. It sort of worked but it just looked pretty horrible. Also you'll need several of them so you can balance the lens at different zoom levels. And if you add a filter you will need to adjust it in the field. To get the best out of this lens on an X5 gimbal you need to be in perfect balance all the time to be really usable. You need something that's easy to tweak depending on the situation. So I've designed this gimbal balancing kit it's made from a couple of 3D printed parts. There's a carrier that you fix to the back of your camera with some foam tape. It's very light so you can just leave it in place all the time. And there's a second 3D printed weight holder that you load with lead strips and just hold it all in place with some blue tack. And this is easy to swap so you can adjust the weight depending on exactly what you're doing. I use a couple of these already loaded and balanced for the max zoom and mid position 100 millimeters and 50 millimeters 
Well, I generally find any adjustment to compensate for different filters can be done by adding or removing blue tack, or sometimes just adding a little more lead or taking some out. Now, I actually tend not to use this lens around the 35mm range because the Olympus 14 to 42 mm lens is really better suited. There's not uh, actually a lot of room between the camera and the gimbal here to fit a weight, so these printed parts are designed to just fit on and clear the back. Use some double sided foam tape, use something like uh, 3M VHB which um, is rated for outdoors so it won't actually come loose with heat or cold. Um, I've got one of the white holders here, best way to do it is make sure you've got your foam stuck on and then what you want to do is stick this on, make sure it's square and pushed over this way as far as possible to make sure that it clears anything. Don't stick it on too hard just yet, just in case you've got it in the wrong position. And as you can see, that just clears the back part of the camera, just nicely. So I can now press that down. So now you've got the carrier attached to the back of the camera with some double-sided foam tape. Um, and it's probably a good idea to leave this for 24 hours because it does take a little while for this double-sided foam tape to go off properly. I've taken a couple of the carriers and filled them with some lead strips and blue tack. And as a guide, I find a good weight is 38 grams works well for the maximum zoom and 30 grams works well for about 50 mil zoom. But clearly you will have to adjust that depending on your camera and your lens and whatever filters you've got on the front. So we've got this set to 100 mil, which is maximum zoom. We just slide that on there, fits quite nicely, and that's perfectly balanced. Put it whatever position I want and it will just stay there. It really works very nicely. And it's a nice, nice neat looking solution. If we take this down to 50mm, obviously that's going to be biased towards the rear. Take that one out and slot in the 30 gram weight and that gives you the correct balance for a 50mm zoom. Those are the two common settings that I use on here, but you can adjust the weight in here to suit anywhere in between, and it's very simple to do. Most of the time you don't actually have to change any of the weight inside there. You can adjust it by just adding or removing a little bit of blue tack. Very simple. As you can see, the camera and the gimbal are slightly off balance in the roll axis now. And this is because the weight at the rear is offset. You can fix this by using this little side carrier that I've designed. This just sticks on there like that with some foam tape. And then there's another weight carrier. Uh, and I generally find that if this weighs about 12 grams, then it will give you the correct balance in the roll axis. Again, you're going to have to adjust that to suit your own camera, gimbal and filter combination. So there we have a beautifully balanced 35 to 100 mil lens in all axes. So wherever you put it, it will just stay there. So the gimbal motors and the controller are hardly having to do any work. And it makes it very usable for shooting video. And as you change it, it's so easy to swap. You just pull that one off, put that on, and so on. Very quick. And when you're not using the 100mm zoom lens, just pull off the weight holders and put them in your lens bag. And the carries are so light, you can just leave them in place. And I've been using this for a while now, and apart from looking pretty good, it works really well. And I'll leave links below to the STL files in Thingiverse if you want to print your own. And if not, our friends over at Xcopters have put together a complete balancing kit. You get a couple of holders, the rear and the side mounts, as well as foam tape. 
Apart from the obvious benefits of using a long lens for inspections and surveys, I found there's something else I'm taking advantage of more often these days. Long lenses effectively flatten perspective, so it's possible to get those overhead shots of people and buildings that everyone asks for without actually having to fly over them. For general risk and legislation reasons, flying over crowds or people or anything breakable is not actually a good idea. So by using a long lens from a long way off vertically and horizontally from whatever it is that you're filming, means the footage can look like it's almost directly overhead. For example, this photo I took at least from Tom's wedding looks like it was taken pretty much from overhead. In actual fact, it was taken from well over 50 metres away. The perspective is flattened by the lens set at 100mm zoom. And this is great when you want to video events and crowds and can't do it safely. I hope you found that useful and as always if you've got any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to try and answer them. I'll see you next time.